I'm John Riley, and I am the owner of Capital Accounting Services in Middlesex, Vermont. My website is capitalaccounting.org. For the past 30 years or so, I've been working with nonprofit organizations and assisting them to manage their financial information and their statistical information. For the financial information, I use QuickBooks software. But for statistical information and managing a lot of the financial projections, I use Excel. QuickBooks does great in doing the day-to-day -day transactions, but does not do very good in trying to put them together in meaningful reports. It's an idea of some of the things that can be done with Excel and some of the things I do. I work a lot with budgets, and one of the things I insist on in working with budgets is to show detail so we know where the figures came from. It's a very simple budget, showing some detail in the middle, showing the, the summary on the, the left-hand side, and showing some pie charts that might be of more interest to the board or somebody who was, was outside the the organization. <clears throat> As you can see, one of my first problems is that I have a deficit, almost a $10,000 deficit. So I can play what if and I can see how I might go about balancing that budget. One of the things I could do is cut the social worker to 30 hours a week. And notice when I, I hit enter, the total budget for the social worker, total budget for salaries, as well as the fringe benefits and that bottom line will change. So there's a way I can turn that deficit into a surplus, but the question is can I do it with reduction of hours for the, the social worker. This is looking at something a little different. This is a, a bigger budget or a more detailed budget. A uh, budget, in fact, that has several sheets. And because it has a number of sheets, I've done a table of contents. And I can click on what I want to see on the table of contents. Again, this budget has a loss. You can see that a large part of their income is coming from ticket sales. And I have a separate page on ticket sales. Uh, this gives me a list of the various types of presentations, the amount of the sales, the concession revenue, sponsor ad revenue, grand total of revenue, expenses, and net. And what I can do is right now I have $81,000 in presentation revenue. I can say suppose I had 10 rather than 5. I move up to 115 and my net income for events goes to 41000 Go back to my profit and loss. And now indeed I do have a surplus. I can go back again on presentations and say, well, maybe seven is a little more realistic. These things change. Go back on my profit and loss, and I still have a profit. So those are the types of things, those are the what-ifs you can do. And play what-if with, with any of these numbers, and all of these numbers have details on additional sheets. I'm going to go back and look at something different in Excel and that is the database of Excel. In this case, what I'm doing is I'm tracking the number of hours of service I give for in-office in services, in-home services. I'm looking at the fees in both, and I'm looking at that at my various offices, I'm looking at it by month, I'm looking at it by year and by fiscal year, oh, for the past 10 years or so. So there's quite a bit of data. There's 5,000 lines of data in here. Excel can handle up to a million lines of data. So there's virtually no limitation on what Excel can handle. Do a very quick analysis that I can do on a table and say what I want. I don't want all my offices. I just want Chicago. There's just Chicago. Or I really have too many fiscal years. I want to look only at fiscal 2009 there's fiscal 2009. Kind of one-click instant analysis is very easy to get. May not tell you, however, as much detail as you like. And consequently, the thing that is most powerful to me in Excel is the use of so-called pivot tables and pivot charts. This is a pivot chart. And what I've asked for it to give me is the sum of hours 
that are given by year, some of in home hours, in off in home hours, that are given by year. I can say I really don't want that. What I want is in office hours. There's my in office hours by years. I can say that's not really as detailed as I like, so I'm going to bring down county. There's my in office hours by county for years. I can also say, I'm going to get county off. I can also say I want to look at it by site. There's my information by site by year. But that may be a little too much because there's just too much data on there. So I can say that instead of all sites, all I want is the Boston site. So there's my information on Boston. They didn't do very well in 2007. Uh, by year. So you can kind of get instantaneous analysis of anything that's on here in any way you particularly like to see it. You can also, using that same pivot table, um, pull data from the web or from any source. Uh, I often pull data from Access. Access is very tricky to, to write reports and do charts and graphs in. So I export it into Excel. You can do the same thing from the, the web. And you can see it's laid out pretty much the same way, so you can get the same type of information. And that's also, you can, you can pull pivot charts, you can pull pivot tables. Again, the sort of is same way to, to uh, use data from the web. I'm going to move on to a third topic, something a little different. And this is an allocation sheet. A lot of organizations have uh, various funds that they allocate money from. Funds have a budget, and we want to keep track of how we're doing with that budget. In this case, I've set up a fuel fund, food, clothing, transportation, housing. And what I can do is I can add entries to this with a date with the social worker who has done the uh, assignment I can then say um, what program it is assigned to. And I can use a pull down. I set up a pull down based on my budget. And I'm going to choose in here temporary housing. And I'm going to give this to Sam Jones, who got some other funds. Notice it puts the names together here. Sam lives in Granville, so I'm going to add Granville. And here, I'm going to give $1,000 for temporary housing. Now, notice what will happen as soon as I hit return, is you'll see that show up in the allocation, and it has reduced the balance. Same way we looked at data on the uh, other data sheet, I can now pull that information by town, and I can say this is how much I gave to the people who lived in the town of Burlington. Uh, or I can pull it by program, and I can get the details of what I allocated. And there's the details of what I allocated. There's 355 there, there's 355 there. So it's a great way to be able to manage funds and have some management information as to where those funds are going. Okay, those are the things I wanted to show you here. Uh, if you have questions, you can give me a call. I'm at 802-229-5988. You can also check out the website, capitalaccounting.org. Thank you for watching.